today, man, what are we going to be talking about? Oh, you know what? We're going to be talking about tech salaries. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about tech salaries today, guys. Uh, tech is booming, guys. And I'm telling you right now, if you aren't in tech, you need to get into tech. If you are doing something else that you don't like, you need to figure out a way how you can get into tech. This is the reason why I'm pushing it so heavily on the channel. It is where things are going. You heard about the metaverse. You heard about uh, all these companies trying to be part of that. VMware, right? NVIDIA. All these companies are trying to be part of the metaverse. You see where technology is going in order for you to have some opportunity in your life to make a whole bunch of money. It's going to be in tech. So that's why I'm pushing that heavily, guys. I am pushing that heavily. Um, we're going to do this, man. We're going to be talking about tech salaries today, guys. We're going to be talking about tech salaries. So if you're on a fence, if you're on a fence about going into tech, these salaries are going to make you say, damn, I want to go into tech and I should be going into tech. So let me do the real, let me do the real one. Damn. That's what it's going to make you do. That's what these salaries are going to make you do, guys. Big salaries, guys. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to talk about VMware. So you guys know VMware. VMware is a fantastic company. Uh, it's going to be spinning off of Dell soon. And let's look at the salaries that uh, you can get as a professional at VMware, guys. You just don't know how much money you could be making. Right now, you probably are in a row making $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year. Those are decent salaries, man. Those are entry-level salaries and so forth. But as you can progress within your tech career, you should be making a lot more money. That's where it is going. That's where your skills are going to continue to grow to get you guys to that bag. But let's talk about VMware, guys. Let's talk about VMware. So VMware is navigating a new future as a standalone company and is expanding its ranks to do so. The cloud competing giant finalized its $9.6 billion spin out from the parent company Dell this week. And uh, not long after that, new executives took to the helm of VMware, guys. And I'm going to skip through a lot of this stuff. But VMware recently hired and is continuing to hire a slew of new engineers, salespeople, analysts to execute their vision of growing and becoming one of the top security and edge computing units. So, guys, if you're looking for a job, if you're looking for a job, right? Matter of fact, our brother, Mr. Nix, uh, he has interviews at, I believe, VMware and at Microsoft that he's studying and getting prepared for. He probably already had him already this week. I got to get with him. Uh, Miss Nix, if you are on this channel today, uh, leave us, leave us a, a comment on how that has went this week, uh, this week, my brother. Um, to find out how much VMware is paying new hires, Insider Analyzed Salaries approved of H-1B-1 visas published by the U.S. Office of Foreign Labor Certification. This data is drawn from 951 approved visa applications for VMware workers hired in the last 12 months, guys. And you got to see this here. Hey, these guys are choosing to get talent a lot of the times from out of this country who aren't U U.S. citizens. And you know why? Because a lot of the U.S. citizens... A lot of people who, who, who aren't in tech has been sleeping on tech. A lot of people who aren't in tech has been sleeping on tech, guys. And, hey, you know what? When you don't have the talent, you got to go and find it. And when you go and find it, these are the people that ends up, you know, becoming the middle class, becoming the upper class and so forth because they're getting this money. But let's look at the salary overall. VMware hired hundreds of engineers with some making over $200,000 a year, guys. $200,000 a year. Let's look at this, uh, the, the engineer statistics here. Staff Engineer 2, based out of California. Staff Engineer 2, based out of California, guys. You know how much they're making? $276,000 a year. Damn! Let me say that again. $276,000 a year. Damn! All right? Staff Engineer a staff engineer, just a regular staff engineer out of California, $250,000 a year. Staff engineer out of Texas, $229,000 a year. Staff engineer, VM Cloud, California, $225,000 a year. Systems engineer, $185,000 a year. Lead applications developer, guys, $165,000 a year. Member of the technical staff, $160,000 a year. Application support engineer out of Georgia, $80,000 a year. Application support engineer, Guys, you know, that's an entry-level 
uh, engineering position right there. These are the roles that you could be getting after you get your degree, or if you're transitioning to the IT world. These are roles that you can get, guys. I mean, like eighty thousand dollars a year is a fantastic salary, especially if you haven't been making that every, any time in your life, or if you're coming out of school. VMware hired analysts across the U.S. with salaries ranging from ninety-five thousand dollars, guys, all the way up to one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. So these are roles. These are you know engineer roles and so forth. And if you don't want to be an engineer, you can still get to the money, guys. Let's just say you don't you know you don't want to go the engineering route. Right. The engineering is a little bit hard for you, like it was for me. Right. Um, you know, but I came as a software engineer. But if you don't want to go that route. Right. That's why I preach a lot of times about management information systems is because, uh, you know, a lot of people who want to get into tech don't want to go the super tech route. Well, there's a route that you can go with management information systems, guys. Right. Business information systems and business information management. There's so many routes that you can go information technology management that you can go to be in tech, but to not be super strong on the technical spectrum. When I think about MIS and I think about ITM and all those other degrees, you think about business sits here. The tech side sits here, super tech side sits here. This is computer science. This is our brother, Professor Black Ops over here. He's like that super strong technical guy. Well, information technology management kind of sits in the middle. Management information systems kind of sits more towards the business. You are introduced to tech, but you don't have to be a super strong tech head, okay? You don't have to be a super strong tech head. But let's talk about this. If you don't want to be a super strong tech head, guess what? You could become an analyst. You could become an analyst, right? Analysts basically are helping a business determine which systems they should be using, or they should be uh, working with the business to help them with processes and so forth. And guys, with the analyst roles, you can make a whole crap load of money as well, too. Let's look at this one. Lead application analyst out of California, $188,000 a year. Damn! Senior business systems analyst, $166,000 a year. Advisory data analyst, 152. Business systems analyst, 150. Programming analyst, 132. Out of Texas, right? Business systems analyst. This is an entry level role if you are a management information systems major, computer information systems major, you can computer science major, any of those tech degrees that I push heavy on this channel. These are the roles that you can get, and these are the paths that you can take, and these are the salaries that you can get, guys. Business systems analyst, $95,000 a year. $95,000 a year, guys. So let's talk about this management because a lot of people, although a lot of people are scared, a lot of people are scared, man, but not if you're a ladder climber. I'll tell you that. That's why I push a lot of the times the management piece of it as well, because you can make a lot more money in the management space as well. If you want to go to manager route, right, become a senior business strategy manager, $242,000 a year. Service management, uh, becoming a process architect, $167,000 a year. Senior manager, one fifty nine, dollars right? Senior manager, Advanced Analytics and Business Intelligence, $159,000 a year. Business Systems Analyst and Finance, $150,000. IT Business Systems Analyst, $146,000. Business and Data Systems Manager, $100,000. Business Systems Analyst out of Texas, $95,000 a year. Guys, the money is here. The money is here. And management makes even more, right? Uh, some of these numbers right here are ones, you know, uh, five figures, six figures. The majority of them are six figures. But if you continue to climb the ladder, you become a senior director, you're making $310,000 a year. Senior director, 296. Group manager, 246. Senior manager, R&D, 245, 241, 240. Guys, the money is here. The money is here. You can't tell me right now that the money ain't here. And this is just VMware. This is just VMware. And I'm just talking about VMware because VMware is a spinoff of Dell and they have some of the highest salaries in the industry as well, but they aren't the highest. You have companies like Google that we're going to look at next. We're gonna, we're gonna look at some of the other ones next, right? Bigger companies. And here's the thing too, guys. Here's the thing. Some of these big companies pay well, but smaller companies, private companies, they can do even better. And you know why? Because they have to pe compete with the, uh, some of these bigger companies. So you can make even more at some of these small private companies. You can make even more at some of these small private companies. Guys, let me jump over to the chat. So I just want to, I want to see what you guys talking about over here. King says, big homie, please break down the cost of living with it. Man, King, that's a good question, right? 
it depends on where you are. In California, Texas, and so forth, you got to really look at the cost of living. I'm in Texas right now. The cost of living is relatively expensive and so forth. But guys, I mean, like, you know, you have to look at the places where you are. And a lot of these roads as well, too, they are remote. They are remote. They are remote. We've learned that with the pandemic that you can be remote and work in a lot of these roles. The majority of people right now that I'm coaching from um, uh, from Mr. Nix, all these guys are looking at remote jobs, guys. They're looking at remote jobs and they're able to, to demand high salaries working remote, staying in the places where they currently are. So the cost of living, uh, we can do a breakdown on that at some other time, uh, King, but I would say this, you know, the salaries, the salary is really going to dictate or the location is really going to dictate your salary. But a lot of these companies are paying you high salaries like this, even though you are remote. So cost of living, uh, you have to do that based on where you are. 